Welcome back to this introductory series of lectures on corpus linguistics. Today we are going to look briefly at what are sometimes called dispersion or concordance plots using a text analysis program called ANTCONC, designed and made available by Lawrence Anthony of Waseda University in Japan. This will also be the first, the very first, step in the making and searching of your own corpus of English. When we look at concordance lines, we consider how a word or expression is patterned within a context or span of four or five words to either side of it, for example. When we search for collocations, we consider the frequency and likelihood of lexical co-occurrences in a text as a whole. When we focus on colligations, we search for grammatical patterns that co-occur with a search item. But sometimes it's useful to know where in a text a word or group of related words occur. Some text analysis programs like the freeware AntConc or the commercially available Wordsmith allow you to show what are called concordance or dispersion plots that indicate the position in the text where the word or words occur. Does the word occur frequently at the beginning, in the middle or at the end of a text? Or does it occur fairly, fairly regularly throughout a text? To do a concordance or dispersion plot, you need to download a text analysis program to your PC or Mac. As we've said, we will use Lawrence Anthony's free software, AntConc. To get this software, you have to go to Lawrence Anthony's webpage at Waseda University and follow the instructions to download AntConc. We will also need a text or some texts to analyse. The easiest thing is to go on the web and choose a text or texts that are easily downloadable. Text can range from an out of copyright novel on Project Gutenberg's website to an article on a news website. In other words, your text can be big or small. For this example, I've chosen a small text, an old BBC news text, that's a copy of a speech given by the then leader of the Scottish National Party, Alex Salmond, to his party congress. I've cleaned it up a bit, that is, I've edited out things like photos and additional information, and I've saved a version of the file that just contains the plain text of the article. In other words, I've saved what I want to analyse as a plain text file. So I've got a text or some texts to analyse, uh, so I can open up AntConc and I can run the text analysis programme. There are lots of things that you can do with AntConc. Uh, first of all, I would click on File and Open File to browse for the text file or the text files that I want to analyse. And then I can click on File View to check that the files are OK. If they are, I can click on Word List to generate frequencies of particular words in the text or texts. And I can click on Concordance to generate concordance lines of any word that I want to investigate. For example, in this case, independence. So, AntConc will tell me the frequency of the word independence in Alex Salmond's speech. It'll give me some concordance lines that demonstrate how Alex Salmond uses the word independence in his speech. But let's say that I also want to know where in the text the word independence appears. To answer this, I click on concordance plot and I find immediately that the word is bunched up towards the end of the text. Now that is interesting in itself. One thing that it tells us is that if I did not look at the whole text, the whole speech, if I chose, for example, to sample from the beginning or the end of this speech, I would either over or under represent the frequency of the word independence in the speech. So I've got an argument immediately against sampling texts and in favour of using complete texts for analysis. I also now know that in this text, the leader of the Scottish National Party, or the then leader of the Scottish National Party, focuses on the topic of independence fairly intensely in only one part of his speech. That then, very simply, is an example of a concordance or dispersion plot. Again, it's useful if you want to know where in one or more texts a particular word or expression is situated. You can try it out in texts now of your own choice with a range of lexical items or grammatical items. Which kind of word, lexical or grammatical, do you expect to appear more regularly in any text? 
test your hypothesis on any text of your choice. To sum up so far then, certain text analysis programs like AntConc or Wordsmith enable us to look at the way words are patterned or dispersed through a text. We can see quickly where the, there is bunching, where in a text a topic is covered and where it is neglected. Comparing texts, we can see similarity or difference in expression of particular concepts as the texts develop. So far in this course, then, we've been looking at different corpus search tools. Each explores texts in a different way, though some are related. We've been looking at frequency, manual interpretation of concordances, statistical measures of collocation using mutual information, T-score, Z-score, We've looked at colligation, and we've looked very briefly now at concordance or dispersion plots. What I want to do now is to think about how you would develop and research your own questions using these tools to help you. The following research questions are based on Mark Davis's 2010 article on COCA. Most of you, I hope, will have read that. We can ask questions about lexical change and innovation. For example, how have words such as globalization teenage, adolescent, same-sex, mentor, downsize, and so on, enter the language? Have other words disappeared, like scullery, or reappeared with different senses, like wireless? And we can ask questions about morphological change and innovation. For example, how have suffixes like nick, gate, and ista entered and diffused through the language? How about particular words like flammable, inflammable, uninflammable. A frequency search of the time corpus using chart for a decade by decade breakdown shows us, for example, that scullery, an old fashioned word for kitchen that I remember my father using during my early childhood, slowly declined in popularity during the 20th century, at least again in American journalism. American journalism can be seen as an index of its popularity in American and British usage across these decades. A similar frequency search of time shows a different pattern for wireless. In the early part of the 20th century, it became popular as part of the discourse of radio reception, but it declined as radio technology changed and alternative expressions became popular. And then, in the age of the internet, wireless came back roaring into popularity, but with a new sense. The idea that you could take your computer, not your radio, around with you and still receive emails and texts and so on. Of course, we can ask questions that are not necessarily lexical, but also syntactical or grammatical. For example, what are the most frequent phrasal verbs in British or English or American English or different genres? How is the get passive used in English? How are constructions like end up being used in English? And we can ask semantic questions like, are the central and typical meanings of lexical items the same or different? Is gather used more frequently to mean collect or understand? How have the meanings of gay, lame, green, etc. changed in the last decades? And finally, we can ask questions about discourse. For example, what are we saying about issues like gender, the environment, politics, terrorism, revolution? immigration and so on that is different from what it was about 10, 30 or 100 years ago. Or in any given text about gender, the environment, politics, terrorism and so on, how are particular words or expressions, for example, woman, battle or the first person pronoun I, distributed? Now think about these questions and think of a question that particularly interests you. How would you begin to explore it? Which corpus tools, from those now at your disposal, would you select first? Thanks for watching.